For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Many people, when they hear of salvation, heaven and hell, they think about the final judgment that God would judge and will condemn those who didn't believe and will give them the destination to be eternally separate from Him in a place called the lake of fire and brimstone. Many say, is that the God of love who throws people into hell? They think that love is accepting everything. When you see someone in an abusive relationship, usually a woman in a relationship where her husband betrays her, assaults her, humiliates her, those who see that tell her, woman, get out of this relationship. And she says, but it's love. But they reply, this is not love, this is sickness. You don't love him. How do you accept him to do that with you? Soon, everyone understands that love is not accepting everything. But when we speak about salvation with God, they think that God must accept everything. If he accepted everything, he would not be love. He would not be justice. When the Bible says, for God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him, this is love. Love is the chance that he has given and keeps on giving the world to receive salvation through faith in the Lord Jesus. Salvation does not come by merit, does not come because you deserved, because you were kind, but because you believed in His Son to save you. But the text goes on saying, I'm reading from John chapter 3 from verse 17. Verse 18 says, He who believes in Him is not condemned. You don't want to be condemned? Then you must believe in the Lord Jesus. Do you want to spend eternity away from God? So, you have to believe in His Son, who He sent to save you. You must believe in Him, because he who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. It's not that they will be condemned, they are condemned already. But why? They are already condemned, and by whom? They are condemned by themselves, by their lack of faith, because they have rejected the offer, the free gift from God, which is to receive salvation. But he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. In other words, the only Son of God. God is not unfair, neither an executioner. He stretches out his hand to save whoever, but he cannot force anyone to grab this hand. The hand of the lost one needs to be stretched out in return and grab his, and if that happens, that person will be saved. Understands, just as it says, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. So the decision of who will be saved is not God's. Whether the person will be saved is not God's to decide, but the person. It's up to the person to believe or not. Salvation is a choice, a decision you make. It's not something you do because you have a hundred percent proof and evidences to back that up. No, salvation is to believe in the promised word, the spoken word. When you take the medication prescribed by the doctor, you believe in the word of the doctor, in the promise of the medication, even reading the prescription, 
that says that you can have side effects, but you discard the side effects and you believe in the greater promise, which is you to be free from your illness. So you take an act of faith when you take the medication. Likewise, is when you leave the house in the morning to go to work, to school, believing that after the time that you studied in school, in uni, you will get a degree that will give you a better opportunity for your career. You do that based on faith. We use faith for everything in life. But many say, I only believe in what I see. That's a lie. You don't see all that you believe in. You don't see all that you believe. When you take a plane, do you see the certificate of the pilot to fly that airplane? Do you smell his breath to see if he drank? Do you ask for a medical test to see if the pilot will have a heart attack? Do you go to check the outside of the airplane or you ask to see the engine, the turbine? Did you study to understand how to maintain an airplane before you're flying to check that everything's okay and to allow it to fly? You don't do that. You don't see the pilot, you don't see his certificate, you see nothing. You just take an action of faith without seeing. You believe that the pilot did his job. He won't make a mistake during the flight. That the mechanics did their job. That the airline company did their job. You believe that the climate, the weather, will not be adverse and bring this airplane down. You need to believe in so many things before you're buying your flight ticket and flying on holidays that you don't even think about that. So many things can go wrong, but you don't think about them. You simply approach them by faith. And all can go wrong. And then you come before the Word of God and you want to question it. This is an insult to God. That's why those who don't believe are condemned already. Condemned by whom? By themselves. Condemned by their unbelief, by their own reasoning. Because if they used the very same action that they use for other things in life, approaching things by faith, if they took the same attitude towards the Word of God and their salvation, they would be saved. But they don't. They treat God as less, lower than the medication they take, the bank where they put their money in, the plane that they used to travel on holiday. They put God below everything. Soon, they are confessing that they don't believe in God. Therefore, is as it is written. He who does not believe is condemned already. Learn this, dear friends. This is not God's desire. God's desire is for salvation. He did not send His Son to the world to condemn it, but to save it. This is God's desire, but He needs you to believe and believe that there's no other way to be saved. If you are in a place called heaven, where there's a king, a lord, who is perfect in his righteousness and principles, and does not accept sin. And you being a sinner, the only way to enter this place is to have your sins forgiven. And the only way for your sins to be forgiven is to accept the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus who paid for your sins. He was the only one who did not sin. Thus, his death could pay for our sins. There's nothing you or I can do to be free from our sins. Absolutely nothing. No charitable works, no religion. There's no point on saying, I'm not going to sin from now on. There's no point because sin is running through your veins. 
The only way for us to be free from the debts of our sins is if someone pays for them. If we pay for these debts, we die, because the wages of sin is death. But if we accept the payment already made under our name by the Son of God Himself, then we will be able to enter His presence. The decision is yours. Faith is a choice. What do you want? Condemnation or salvation? If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.